Gol. Harry protests in Dartmouth reignited. A whole set of confunction nonsense at the health ministry. Fire service says the park in Bonn had no fire safety devices. And why big business deals mean nothing for the average guy named. I am Noriko Bullford, and this is Uncut News. Do you see news happening? Send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592-659-6151. The residents of Dartmouth on the Esquibo Coast are again demanding justice for Orrin Boston, in light of the manslaughter charge brought against his alleged killer. After over four months, the DPP recommended a manslaughter charge for the constable last week. However, the residents of the community believe that he should have faced a murder charge, a contention that Boston's lawyer Nigel Hughes apparently agreed with. Boston's father also said he is supportive of the protest because justice must be served in the matter, while the villagers plan to continue the protest until proper justice is served. The Ministry of Health will no longer issue clearance or discharge forms for people who recovered from the Rona at home following a surge of requests for the forms. They also announced today that the Health Ministry will no longer give PCR tests to anyone who was not hospitalized or at serious risk of catching the disease. Minister Anthony is asking you to instead stay at home if you were exposed to the Rona and only get tested if you show symptoms after five days. However, discharge certificates will be provided to patients who are hospitalized. Continuing with the nonsense at the health ministry, Dr. Anthony was forced to do damage control after images of a father carrying his four-year-old son to the cemetery and Mabaruma went viral on social media last week. He issued an apology to the family, noting that something seriously went wrong there. According to him, the child died of the virus and the post-mortem was complete, so the mortuary handed over the body to the family for burial. But due to a miscommunication, the ministry vehicle that carries the body to the cemetery was not available in a timely manner, forcing the father to literally take matters into his own hands. Anthony has since ordered that the regional health officer conduct a thorough investigation so that corrective measures could be put in place. Heart-wrenching story this is. I know it's a child in there, but I could imagine it must have felt like the heaviest weight in the world to that father. The Guyana Fire Service said that the GNIC bond had absolutely no fire safety equipment. The bond that housed La Parkin and Tropical Shipping had no smoke detectors, fire extinguishers, or fire hoses installed. The cause of the blaze was not immediately known, but both shipping companies incurred huge losses. Tropical Shipping Company lost propane cylinders, barrels from foreign, household appliances, and other items. Meanwhile, the parking lost one bobcat machine, office furniture, gas cylinders, crates of energy drinks, three 40-foot containers containing electrical equipment, and three 40-foot refrigeration containers, as well as 19 vehicles were damaged. Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's car of the day. Currently on sale is this 2016 Mazda CX-5. It comes with Bluetooth, Mark Grimm's low tires, TV, CD, stereo, LED fog lamps, electronic parking brake, park camera, side camera, rear spoiler, and much, much more. Buy cash for $6.2 million. I'll pay down as low as $1,240,000 down with around $120,000 monthly for five years, and it's yours. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info. Or visit the showrooms at Lot 171 Peter Roshi, Queenstown, or Lot 2 Lama Street. And tell America sent you for this sweet deal. For the first time ever, the presidents of Guyana, Suriname, and Brazil are meeting in Paramaribo on Thursday for a working lunch. Whatever that means. But the next day, Bolsonaro will be coming to Georgetown to meet with the president in an event that will most likely consist of discussions on food security, telecommunications, infrastructure integration, trade, and of course petroleum. Do I smell the South American OPEC in the works? No, it's probably just gas. Six months ago, secondary school teacher Nathaniel Ledger was struck down and killed by Tarachan Balgobin, 
a director of projects at the Ministry of Finance, while Paul Gubin was allegedly attempting to make a U-turn in an official ministry vehicle. Despite having sent the file to the DPP's office since mid-September last year, the police have yet to charge Balgobin for Ledger's death. His family is demanding justice as Balgobin was released on $100,000 bail immediately following the deadly accident and has not seen the inside of a magistrate's court ever since. The government was angry that people had dumped piles upon piles upon piles of rubbish in the streets of Georgetown just mere hours after they ended their weekend cleanup of the city. So, in response to the massive waste that is seen all throughout the city, the cops did the only sensible thing. They arrested three old guys for littering on Wellington Street. Yes, a set of old men instead of the big businesses. On Tuesday, popular tailor Satnarine Bisnoth, Joe Mosing, and Wellington Jerk were arraigned for littering. The men were charged separately and pleaded not guilty. The trashy trio was released on $40,000 bail each and will return to court February 10th, 2022. And again, I hope they actually go after those big businessmen who are dumping the majority of the trash. You can multiply your cash by selling Digicel Top Up. This is a legit way you can earn some extra money at your business or to supplement your current hustle. Become a Top Up vendor quick and easy through Cellular Plus. Call them on 685-3109 for more info. It's now time for today's Runner Report. Today, the nation recorded 1,083 new cases. There are now 1,101 persons dead, 18 in the ICU, 11,887 in home isolation. And the total number of confirmed cases around the nation now stands at 53,178. So please, people, wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your nose and mouth and mask up before we leave the house. When you do leave home, try to avoid enclosed spaces and large crowds. And remember to give six feet of space between you and others. Now for the vaccines. So far, 418,333, or 81.5% of adults, have had the first dose, and 305,194, or 59.5% are fully vaccinated. As for the teens, 31,861, or 43.7% have had the first dose, and 22,464, or 30.8% are fully vaccinated. And now for our stupid news of the day. You know what I think is stupid? Just how little people get paid in Ghana. For a nation so small and so blessed with so many resources, we are doing far worse off than we really should economically. Now, I'll admit that this government did pass out money like it was going out to style last year. They are obviously going into overdrive to exploit our nation's natural resources and to create new trade connections with our neighbors and other nations. Multiple international corporations have reportedly flocked to Guyana already and have bought up as much land as they can get their grubby little hands on, thus injecting billions into the economy on a nationwide scale. But this means absolutely nothing to the average person's pocket. That is just merely a matter of rich people giving other rich people money. It's not going to trickle down, as trickle-down economics is a stupid myth, like the Easter Bunny or Old Hyde. It's a stupid term economics made up to convince people that somehow giving people with a lot of money, even more money, will somehow make you money. Yes, stupid indeed. That brings me to my next point. Everyone keeps saying, if you need money, just open up a business. But let's be real, not everyone can nor should do that. Owning a business is hard, and not for everyone, I can tell you from experience. Plus, if everyone is a business owner, then who will be the employees? Instead of just shaming people for demanding more, we as a nation need to pressure those in power to pay people a livable wage. And if they can't pay a livable wage, then they shouldn't stay in business. I know it sounds harsh, but look at it this way. A business doesn't have the right to survive, but people do. And if you need to exploit people to stay in business, then you're not even a good businessman to start with. And if you can't see the logic in that, then that is pretty stupid. Hey, I'm interrupting this program to let you know that not all truck parts are created equal. Some does work hard without any problems for a long time, while others does make your truck broke down quick and got your runny your pockets again. Get genuine high-quality parts from powered automotive truck spares and engine parts and extend the life of your repair. They're the authorized dealer in Guyana for Hammer USA products like brake valves, clutch discs, universal bearings, and other sp- Visit them at 1161 EE Eccles or call them on 6970171. Powered Automotive, the number one truck and engine parts store in Guyana. If you didn't know, well, now you know. Moving on to our uncut news, here's poll question of the day. 
Every day we pose a question about current events in Guyana of the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So yesterday's question was, how can we as a people change the culture of littering that exists in Guyana? Dr. Junior says, it really is a culture. To change this, we need to start with the man in the mirror. All the pins in the world can't solve this issue, it's personal. I will not litter, that's the mantra. Indeed. RC View Farm says, we need to decrease the opportunity to litter. There are too many disposable containers and cups out there. However, there should be a system of reward and punishment for littering. I also agree. Tarifa Wolford says, just keep shaming them on social media, post them all over, and then put them to clean up alongside the road for a whole week. Let them scrub down the school playground and put them to use. I agree with that one fully. I love that one. Now, finally, usually I ignore the hate mail, but I gotta read this one. Kevin Brooks is accusing I, Noriko, of being quick to attack the PNC and ignoring racism against afro guyanese because I'm apparently a PPP supporter. <laughs> wow, he seriously believes there's a difference between the two parties. Oh, Kevin, you must be new around here. One week I get called anti-PPP, this week anti-PNC. So I guess I must be doing something, right? So, thanks for the compliment, Kevin. Aha! So, before we get to tonight's question, take a look at this beauty being constructed in a gated community called Richmondville in Guyana. It features four bedrooms, one pool, and 7,000 square feet of living space along with modern amenities. Contact Sheriff Construction on 592-618-5702. So, for tonight's question, do you think it's a good idea for the Health Ministry to restrict the number of Rona tests and clearance forms they give out? Why or why not? Think about that question and tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight, and check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Rico Bullford saying good night, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here, or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now!